Hey y'all, my name is Kumargana and welcome back to the Sims 4 Ultimate Decades Challenge. It is year 1358 and this is going to be an exciting and slightly devastating year. So to begin, essentially, we have a lot of birthdays and a birth. So we're here with Stephen in his majestic glory here. And Amis is currently in labor. Um, so let's just do that. We also have to age up William while we're here. So let's let's worry about Amis and the baby first, first and foremost. So they've had a lot of kids back to back because their eldest is still a toddler, which is kind of funny. And I, it's a lot of toddlers to be taken care of back to back. But, you know, we was on crunch time. And by crunch time, I mean, I was getting a little tired of going back and forth with these side houses. So this is also Stephen's final pregnancy. So let's keep that in mind. We're officially done with our side houses of this generation. Well, Ivo, technically, but the, the older ones, right? So I have a D20 out. No, apparently, no, I don't. It didn't go there. So let's roll for a niece. We want to avoid the number one. Oh, she had a girl. Okay, she got a two. Wow, crazy. And for the girl, we want to avoid numbers 5, 10, 15, and 20. She got an eight. So this little girl survives and she needs a name. So let me open my girl's name list because the boy's list was up. And her name is Felicia. Uh, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Felicia or Felicia just because... Uh, I know two girls. Okay. Um, let me roll. I know someone named Felicia is pronounced Felicia, but it's spelled like that. So she got a 16 and she survives. And this girl's name is Laura. Okay. We had Felicia and Laura. He only had two twin girls. That's his final. Is that it? Okay. Nice. So twin girls. Oh, let me roll one more time for me to see if she survived the second birth. And she does. She got a 19. So welcome to the world, Alicia, Alicia, and well, Felicia and Lauren. God, I'm forgetting their names already. What? What? Why did she just leave our household? What? What was that all about? Are you dying? No? Why is she just... Alicia has given... Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure why she just left our household. She tried to run away really quickly. Like she gave birth and was like, I can't. Okay, that was strange. But William, hello, hello, good sir. Um, Let's age you up, it is your birthday. Let me make sure I'm doing the right thing. And it is, okay. Oh God, we have a lot of birthdays in this household this, this year. So let's come to William and age him up. He's aging into a toddler, and for toddlers, we want to avoid numbers. Is it four, eight, and twelve? Oh yes, I was I was right. Oh, I'm getting so good at this. He got a four. No, oh, the day and it's such a happy day. They lost William. Okay, you can be jokesters. That's fine. Oh, that's so sad. Okay. He was an angel. Okay, whatever. Before we head back home, it is actually Nura's birthday. She's aging into a young adult and she is, I don't know. She's over mourning the death of her twin brother and just living life day by day here with the kids and her, her secret fiance, question mark. But um, time for the adult role. So for this roll, we are rolling a d20, and if she gets anything under the number nine, she does not survive. Is she going to leave Christina by herself stuck in this marriage with all these kids? Oh, she got a 10. Oh, my heart. <laughs> my heart leapt into my throat. I got so scared. I thought she was about to die. Oh, okay. Nurse, fine, guys. Everything's fine. Everything's going fantastically. So, Nura, um, I hate to split twi teen twins apart, but you and your brother, you, you, 
and your brother are not following each other's path. It is a stormy, stormy day here in Willow Creek. I would suggest going across the street and checking on your sister-in-law and nieces and nephew. But, uh, I know you're not gonna. Look, even your little girl has attitude. Even your little girls have attitudes. Uh-oh, something's not going right in this household. But nothing was ever right in this household. Christina's probably chilling, though. Yeah, she's, uh, she's having a blast, as always. So she survives. I'm so excited. I'm so happy she survives. I really, really wanted her to survive to see what her relationship with her kids would be as they grow older. And yeah, so for now, for now she's fine. Uh, Philip is doing great. So I don't know. It seems like the girls went out and did something and then they left Philip with his father because he cares about him more than anyone else. Now we can finally head to the actual household. If you thought we were done with birthdays, you were wrong. We actually have three birthdays in our main household. So we'll be aging up Amir, our resident psycho, his son Humphrey, our resident... I, I don't know what he got going on. I, I feel like I could have come up with an adjective before that stunt he pulled in the previous episode, which I'm still really confused about. And it's a dirty move, Humphrey. And it's Denise's hum uh, birthday as well. So the entire Smith family... Um, so let's just start with Amir. Get it out the way. He's aging up into an adult. If he gets anything less than the nine, he dies and the family immediately goes to Humphrey. Um, he got a, he got a two. <gasps> oh, I was joking. I was really making light of the situation because I didn't think he'd die. He doesn't have a death flower. Will anyone plead? For, I feel like Humphrey would plead for him. So we're going to try to have Humphrey plead for him. But guys, I was kind of joking. This, uh, if he dies, an entire storyline I have planned out immediately. Uh, <laughs> I actually can't do. So um, get on the premises so we can plead for you, please. Now, what is he dying of on this day? Maybe um, he was out for some early morning training and he got, well, first off, let me make him an adult, just in case. But maybe he was out for some early morning training and an accident occurred and he got an injury. And um, this injury, I don't know. Maybe it led to a lot of blood loss, perhaps even an infection. And, you know, the, the doctors of the time just really couldn't really do much about it. So, um, yeah, so he got this injury and it, it led to some pretty bad blood loss, perhaps even an infection of sorts, you know? So let's say death by... I'll say killer rabbit. I don't know. So he was in this really unfortunate training accident. Um, yeah. Uh, oh God. Well, he's that's that's a crazy death. Uh, alas, Amir Smith incurred the wrath of a vicious killer rabbit, and now death awaits him. Sure, killer rabbit, and the first to find. Girl, what the hell did you trip on? And the first to find him is actually Ivo and his favorite child. Oh, she's yawning. Oh, is she a psycho like him? Okay, no, she cares. Actually? Okay, she cares. Had to make sure. Uh, Humphrey, you might want to get down here. Mary, you, this, you might want to see this. The other two, I don't, I don't, you know. And Mary feels like she's gloomy. Sure. Humphrey? Plead for your father. I feel like if anyone's going to do it, Humphrey would definitely, because he is not ready to lead this household. Or maybe should Amis have done it? Humphrey, is this going to work? Does Grim care? Oh, no. Oh. Humphrey, get off your father. Oh, I wasn't expecting this today. 
Oh, wow. Oh, Humphrey. Stop standing on him. <laughs> he's, he's not even sad about it. He's not even sad. Get off of him. What revelation did you come to that just made you feel like this all of a sudden? Okay, Grim, are you gonna take him or what? <sighs> okay, where is his... Okay, his gravestone's right there. Ivo is now afraid of death. Oh, God. Alice leaves for two years. In a mere... <laughs> okay. We have to move on. Humphrey, unfortunately for you, brother, it is also your birthday. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's the first 10 minutes of the gameplay. All right. <laughs> Humphrey, you're aging up into a young adult, hopefully. Um, for you, if we want to, I had to look down and make sure we, we're even aging them up. Yes. Okay. For you, we want to avoid numbers 2, 6, 11, 13, and 14. He got a 2. Fuck. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not having fun anymore. I loaded this game for fun times and relaxation. Now look at me. Upset. Um... Let's make you a young adult first, just in case. Um, Grogo likes deep thoughts. Sure. Okay. So, why is Humphrey dying? I think after he... Okay, what trait did you get? Comforting? Okay, so he wants to make sure the people around him feel good. Sure, family. He wants a successful lineage. I feel like I said this already. Okay, so... Um, because technically speaking, one day is three months, we're going to say a bit of time has passed since Amir's death and Humphrey just could not keep up with the pressure. He knew that he would have to be the one to lead the family and he was not ready to step up to that plate and, and do what that entailed doing. And I think he just let it all get to his head in the worst way possible. And it led to his demise. So, I'm going to say death by poison. And, oh, should Mary or Ivo plead for him? Ivo is his best friend slash brother figure. But this is Mary's boy, like her little boy. Um, I know we were all, like, making jokes about Grogo having to lead the family. But the way things are looking might just be the case. Okay. Um... I've okay wait let me see who's closer with him real quick um oh wait what Mary wasn't close with her son they have a difficult dynamic how did I not realize that okay so Ivo is the one who's going to be doing it Ivo fears death too much oh okay Wait, let me, who, who was good with Ivo? Humphrey, uh, not you. Amis, surprisingly. Well, I guess if she's Amir's favorite. Well about Humphrey's demise. Plead for Humphrey. Okay, yes, plead for Humphrey. Because Humphrey was the last strong connection with her father that she has. Is death gonna let Humphrey stay? No, no. Two heirs? Is Grogle seriously the heir? He's like eight. Okay. Okay. Alice is not going to like getting the letter that her son and eldest grandchild just died days or perhaps weeks apart. I'm not I'm not sure. But for us, the same day. Damn, does Amir not even... Okay, I'm about to say, he don't even get writing on his headstone. I know, I know Mary didn't like him, but damn. Um, I'm making jokes, but I'm actually devastated. I'm distraught. 
I had a title for this episode and everything. I don't even know. I don't even know what the title of this anymore. What do I say? Challenge over. They all died. Well, I could have said that for 1315, but still. Okay. You know what? We actually do have to age up Denise. And the way things are looking, I'm terrified. Because the only... Okay. Well, obviously speaking, here's the thing. Let me age up Denise first, and then we'll go into a conversation about where the lineage could go. So Denise is aging into a, a, a toddler. So we want to avoid numbers 4, 8, and 12. She got a 1. Okay. Thank God somebody gets to survive today. Game. So let's age up Denise. I'll give her a makeover and then we'll go into discussion about um, things, question mark. Mary just lost her, neither of which she was really close to. Well, she she and Amir kind of reached a consensus in the end, but I think it came at the cost of her relationship with Humphrey as he grew older and more distant with all the pressures and stuff he had on him. And I think, not to be very morbid, but I do think that Humphrey just couldn't handle the pressures of it all and unfortunately may have taken his own life okay let's at least we we got a cute new toddler in the house that's nice amir and mary wanted another child i don't think she's pregnant she's fussy and angelic okay so i'm sure alice has got the word by now she sent something back home but i don't think she's gonna come back because most of the kids are older so mary's not going to struggle that much they're financially well off for now they're doing pretty well and yeah <laughs> should <laughs> y'all think uh stephen's going to take this moment to slide in or is it too late is is it too late it might be a bit too late so let me give let me give the little one a makeover and then i'll come back to discuss question mark and a moment of lighter news, Denise is absolutely adorable. Wow, she is super cute and she looks, I wanna say she has her dad's main features, but I think her facial structure is her mother's. And she's an alien, so you know, um, I think it's kind of fitting that the four surviving children that Amir had um, are two who are human, but don't, seem like it because of their skin color that they inherited from their non-human mother and two who are not human but can pass as such so i wonder if um grogo actually became a bit closer to a meese than sybil did so i wonder if um sybil is gonna become close with denise i don't know we'll see but i also wonder if if you know grogo will find more solace in denise because now he has a sibling who has an alien form and they could do alien things together Ivo just, oh God, Ivo just lost his best friend. He, he never knew what happened. I don't think he needs to know. I think he can live a perfectly happy life not knowing what Humphrey did because at the end of the day, it didn't change anything. And though it was an extremely weird thing to do, it didn't cause any harm to his relationship. I can't remember if I pressed play during the creative sim but this is amise she i was just saying that she has a lot of amir's basic features like his skin tone eye color the freckles and he got she got her dad her grandfather's like afro textured hair which is really cool um but i was saying her facial structure is her mother's but the actual color scheme is her father's but um yeah this sucks what the hell mary is crying more about her son than her husband but she was definitely mourning both to be to be completely fair everyone's still mourning as as you know is expected um boy boy did i not expect this from from today now here's the thing i'm gonna i'm gonna let this play and let everybody kind of go into their own thing but th the thing is um Here's the topic of heirs. So Amir was our heir and his heir was Humphrey. Humphrey's now dead. However, luckily for us, Amir does in fact have a second son, Grogo, who is a little bit too young to take over the family. He is a few years away. When does he age up? I don't even want to look at birthdays anymore. I'm sad. He won't age up for an another couple years. Let me see. Eight, nine, 
And he will age up to like 1361. And that's assuming he survives. So if something happens to to hump to Grogo, let me back up. They're they're kind of loud. Not the you know, keep mourning, do your thing. But if something happens to Grogo, the, we're gonna have to choose one of the side households to take over. And by one of the side households, I mean specifically Stephen, because he's the second eldest. Because then Amir's bloodline is gone. I know we could probably go with one of his daughters, but we're really supposed to follow the sons. The only reason I followed Alice is because there was nobody else. Both of her brothers died and she didn't have any uncles or male cousins or anything like that because of the circumstances with her own parents. So if something happens to Grogo, our new main family line will be Stephen. And then Stephen has a handful of sons who are who are still alive, right? He's lost He's lost a lot of children. But then let's say, you know, crazy assumption something happens to his sons and remember Stephen's an older man um he's in he's an adult now so I'm gonna let him live into his elderhood but if something happens to him beforehand or his kids don't survive or his sons don't survive for some reason then the next person we're gonna go to is actually Nasir's son um what's what's your name Walter there we go Nasir's son Walter and potentially his son James if James survives and once again, crazy, crazy assumption. But if something happens to either one of them, then it would go to. Hmm. Would it go to it would go to Ivo because he is the eldest male sim. And if something happens to Ivo before he's able to have a, a living heir, then we'll go to the girls and the eldest girl in the family would be Nura. And Nura has one son who's in Willow Creek. If something happens to her son, it would go to one of Marjorie's boys. So we have quite a few bloodlines to follow. We have a lot of backups because the possibility of a side household becoming a main household is, is extremely high as of now. As of right now, it's extremely high. So let's just keep that in mind. If something happens to Grogo and he does not survive, at least to his teenage years, so he can go ahead and get married and start popping out kids, our next in line is going to be Stephen and his son. So we, the, 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 the chances and possibilities of us switching main households for this challenge, it'll still be a Smith, but it's, it's all too real now. I was joking about it earlier. Um... But it's, it's it's a legitimate thing. Not to make you do chores while you're mourning, but I, I do need you to sweep. So that's really unfortunate. And we have to move on with life. The thing is, I was going to get... I was going to get Ivo uh, married and out the house this episode. But I actually think it's for the best if he stays here for now. I don't want to draw out this engagement any longer than I can, but he's a bit too sad. If he finds himself in a slightly better mood at any point, I'll have him go ahead and marry and, and move out. But we do need people to like forage and help out with the farm and everything. So I don't know, maybe his wife will move in with them just to help out for a bit. And then once Grogo, or at least once Mary has another teenager in the house, maybe he'll uh, go back to live in the estate that his wife is from, his future wife is from, that Maud lives in. So I'm not sure, but but I think he's going to stay here for now because Mary definitely needs help. Are him and Mary on good terms before I say all that? Okay, they're not on bad terms. I think, and based off of the ge the gentleman he is, I think he would, I think he would stay and help out. He would, you know, Humphrey was his nephew and his best friend. He help out his best friend's mother and younger siblings out of respect regardless two of our heirs just died there's a raging werewolf at our front door um she lives in this village and she's definitely not pregnant for some reason this sim specifically putting on this outfit in her werewolf form uh comes out as pregnant girl go pee at home you live down the road what's with people showing up on our property being weird don't die like the last girl um can i Never mind, she might be pregnant. Um, 
think I just lied to myself, but the, the clothes does show up as pregnant even if she's not. I want to turn off this werewolf effect, but no, here we go. Yeah, go be furious somewhere else, please. We're going through it. We don't need a werewolf attack to take another life. Go home. What happens to the alien protection? What happens to the supernatural protection we're supposed to have? Well, actually, the two non-aliens are the ones who died, so... Maybe that checks out. Is... What the hell, Amis? I, I pressed play at the wrong time. Grim was teaching Amis how to shoot a bow and arrow. Can... What, what are you doing? Amis, get back home right now. This is... Wait... Amis went back inside. I thought the werewolf was chasing Sybil for a second. I'm I'm scared of the world. I'm scared of the world. The, the Humphrey and I and I don't even know what's happening anymore. Humphrey and Amir die. They're dead for a little bit of time. Then all of a sudden the Grim Reaper becomes Amis's father figure, and Sybil is getting chased out of the house by werewolves. She wasn't getting chased, but still, that's a scary thing. Um to the grave of fallen smiths. Grim, you're free to go. You can go at any time. Now, preferably. We've seen you more than enough to- Is the fox killing one of our chickens? Are you for fucking real? Amir actually really wants to go talk to Maud. So, we're gonna go- Let's just get out the house. Maybe he will marry her, actually. Like, now that I think about it. Um, Mary doesn't really need that much work to be complete work doesn't really need that much help to be completely honest i mean his presence is helpful and and nice but they have more than enough money they have more than enough food most of the kids are old enough for her to send to the market if they run low on anything she can't necessarily leave and go forage because her youngest is still too young but i think the oh having three elder kids definitely helps so um, he's gonna go to her house and just have a conversation, but I think staying in a house that so many people have died in almost back to back, like his mother's gone, which is already like a little, little bit of an empty feeling, but he was pushing through, but then his eldest brother died, and then right after his best friend slash nephew died, and it's just, it's just too much for him, and I think he's definitely going to want to rush this wedding. So, he's still feeling a bit too sad, though. So just maybe ask her for some advice, maybe. Maybe they can cloud gaze. He's artistic, so maybe he'd like to just relax and watch the sky and just talk and rant, have a listening ear. And he wants to woohoo with her. Um, if you woohoo with her, you're automatically married. That's just how these things work. So... I think he is just going to run off and not even have a ceremony like he had planned or anything like that, but just go ahead, run off, marry Maud, so he could just get out of that house. Which is not the future I intended for him. Well, the, yes, the future. I, I definitely envisioned him with Maud since he immediately fell in love with her um, back in the day, but I wasn't expecting him to want to rush it in this way. He's actually still a bit too sad to do this, and this random guy just joined in on their talk, but he's uh, still a bit too sad to pursue anything further with her at the moment. He still has uh, two days left, which is just a few more months of mourning and grief left. So I think for now he is going to stay at home just to regather himself, but um, they definitely know that by the end of the year they will be wed. So he's just going to head back home and yeah prepare for just the next few months to be filled with him in the house he doesn't really want to be there anymore but you know he's gonna try helping out mary as much as he can um over these next few months as he prepares to um he just wants to make sure that she's kind of set and good instead of just leaving right away as soon as things get difficult because it'd be even more difficult on her so he's going to stay for a little bit longer and then oh now you're good okay well i already said what i said and you're already back so you're staying here <laughs> it is very very early the next morning and we're back at stephen's to age up his newborns things around the house are getting a little bit tense um stephen is 
still reeling. He had barely even, he still actually hadn't finished completely grieving for Nasir when he lost both Humphrey, who was his closest, who the, you know, his closest nephew. And he lost his elder brother, whom he had a complicated relationship with, but that was still his brother. And um, um, Alina has been feeling extremely tense recently, so I don't know, but let's just age up these twins and head out. I guess I'll roll for them while they eat. So these guys are aging up into babies, so we want to avoid numbers. Sorry, they're aging up into infants, so we want to avoid 12, 16, and 18. Felicia gets a 6, and Laura gets a 17. Okay, so both of them survive, which is the important part. So let's just start. Is this Felicia? Yes. I'm going to go with Felicia because it sounds more medieval, though I have a... I, I know someone I best named Felicia, and it's spelled the same way. Okay, so he's she's got the same hair texture as her grandfather as well. And she is a calm infant. Lovely. And let's age up this one. There we go. Oh, they both have brown hair. Nice. Um, she's cautious? Yes. Alright, so we have a calm and a cautious baby. Let's age up these twins and then head off to a different household. All right, and Felicia and her sister are absolutely adorable. Felicia got the Afro hair texture from the grandfather, which I think is super cute. She looks like her mom, but with green eyes. And same thing with Laura. I think Laura looks a bit more like Stephen, though. And they have the same hair color, but clearly different textures. The same shade of eyes, though. Same skin shade, different uh, intensity of freckles but same type of freckles, I suppose. And I forgot to give her lashes. No, I didn't. Uh, one sister just has different lashes. All right, but yeah, this is both of them. I think that they're both absolutely adorable and I'm happy. I don't want to see anyone else die, but we're actually about to go age up some more people. <laughs> ah, we're about to go, we're about to go do more because I don't know, I like to suffer apparently. And we're back with Nura and her family because it is actually the twins birthday. Not only this little girl, but the one and only boy who holds the key to their future is also his birthday. So they're aging up into children and we want to avoid numbers 9 and 19. So for Philip, let's go ahead and roll. He got a 11, so he survives. Oh my God, my heart was in my throat, bro. And for his sister, Margaret? Yeah, I knew I was close. Um, She got a 4. All right, so both of them survive. I'm... I feel like I've been drained of all my energy. But let's see what you how you grow up to be, Philip. As your father's favorite son. How are you? Um, he's okay, he's not bad. He's amusing, sporty, and a daredevil. So like an, a brave person. So I I feel like he really wants to become a knight in the future. Nice. And Margaret, let's age you up as well um age child and she's having a complete meltdown um she's mourning come on and margaret is oh oh god she's mean emotional and comforting so kind of like how her elder sister turned out like their mother's neglect towards them or like the neglect of most of the adults in the house besides the the true the true children being the children that Christina had with her husband versus their brother um and you know the way that they're treated and neglected by their own mother definitely caused the girls to develop some interesting personality traits in order to just protect themselves in a way i forgot what the older sister's personality trait was but having the mean and emotional traits Completely makes sense. Completely makes sense to to me, at least. So, make it for a mental. I feel like she's just in her head quite a bit. Now, what was Lycia's trait? Envious and melancholic and trust issues. So that's how Lycia turned out because of their mother, and not Annika. And Margaret, 
comforting. So I guess she kind of learned to become the comfort to her older sister here. Um, but she also kind of became a mean streak. So I guess she's the older sister who just kind of takes it and is in her own head and doesn't know how to trust or anything like that. And she's defensive. Um, she gets emotional in her own right, but she still takes the time to comfort her older sister when she needs it. So I think that that's really sweet. So I think it's uh, unfortunately these two against the world in this household. I'm sure Philip is a good brother. It's not, it's none of the other kids fault the, the decisions of the adults around them. But let me give these two a makeover. And here are the twins. This is little Philip. He turned out to be a pretty nice kid, all things considered. He could have turned out way worse, to be completely honest. But I think he is super, super cute. And here is his sister, Margaret. I know that this hairstyle is a bit modern, but I don't have that many lock hairstyles for children. And I don't want to use the same ponytail one. So this is her. She is absolutely gorgeous as well. Oh my gosh, she looks like her mama. Like, I'm still standing by the fact that she looks like a mixture of if Christina and uh, Nura had a child. Like, she looks like both of them to me still. Let me let me look at Lycia real quick. Yeah, she and Lycia look very much alike, but I don't know. I see a lot more Christina in, in uh, Margaret, and I think that's just their color, their color scheme. Lycia has the blonde and everything. And uh, Lycia has like the pale skin and black hair like Christina has. So I don't know, but this is them. I think that they're adorable. Can't remember what freckles they had. So I just gave them this, this one. And yes, they're super cute. And oh my God, wait, 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 wait. these guys, <gasps> guys, I finally get to roll to see if they get a cursed trait. I talked about this a long, long time ago, but this is our first time we're actually having um, the Sims who are eligible to potentially get a cursed trait age up to the point where I can even get them the trait because they all kept dying, which, you know, <laughs> crazy. But um, I'm just going to reiterate. So basically, the Sims who were born from parents who use some type of magical means to conceive them or change their gender, like anything that had to do with um basically changing fertility and pregnancy anything that had to do with that their child has a 50 percent chance of getting a negative trait from this mod i have this mod has like a uh, supernatural traits and everything and it comes in the reward store instead of being actual traits so the traits we're going to potentially go with are cursed i'm ignoring demon because it does a lot um this the demon thing fulfills basic me basic needs through mean and mischief interactions which i don't really feel like is appropriate <laughs> but cursed haunted um poisoned possessed tormented yes yeah, so those are the five that they could potentially get the other ones are good or just don't really apply to the situation in my opinion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to flip a coin if it lands on tails they get a negative trait and if it lands on heads they get a positive trait. Now, because Nura um, went to a fae and drank a, po and drank a potion to ensure that she had at least one boy, she didn't know what she was pregnant with at the time. Um, she, sorry, not she, but we have to roll for these potentially negative traits. So first I have my wheel out, but I need to get a coin flip. So let's get a coin flip out. Oh God, it's automatically flipping. I'm going to flip again just because I don't want that one to count. Okay, so Philip does get a negative trait. Um, he got tails, so I'm spinning the wheel. And Philip got the... Um, he got the possessed trait. Okay, so basically, these sims act and talk weirdly as if there are multiple souls living inside the same sim body. So this is what he has to live with. This is his curse, not, not his fault, but that is his curse. And does his sister get one? Because she was technically probably already in the womb when her mother took the potion. And she does. Okay, so both of them get a, a curse trait. So I'm gonna spin again. 
and she gets the she also possessed no she's poisoned okay so these sims suffered from chronic poisoning and are unable to find a cure so she might die a little early who knows so yep the poison trait is here so she'll be eternally sick essentially eternally poisoned i feel so bad she's already suffering she's already in a house with with like little attention and love and now she's eternally poisoned and her twin brother is plagued by the voices of multiple souls residing within his body so nothing nothing's popped up quite yet they are freshly six years old so we'll see them over time when we pop back in this isn't our oh this isn't our main household so we won't really get to see how this affects them as much but i'll definitely make sure to pop in relatively frequently just so we get an idea and so we can see what's going on with these two but that's them i i am worried for both of them but i am glad that at least philip is alive because that means that nur and christina get to stay alive i'll give nur and then don't make over literally before the next episode not a priority at all right now i know i spent all this time saying that um amis was going to be like her father but sybil in true amir fashion does is not mourning anymore she doesn't feel anything not about her brother not about her father she was really close to oh well i i feel like that's close enough to feel something though but not as close to them as i thought for some reason in my head i thought they were closer but um actually she's super close to grogo now were they always that close I don't even remember anymore. Maybe she got upset at the fact that her father's being distant and became super, super close with Amis. And so she distanced herself from him. Um, she kind of maybe felt overlooked or maybe, I don't know, but she was the overlooked one. It was Grogo, but who knows? However, Amis is feeling super, super distraught because the two people she was closest to in the house both just died. So, well, besides her mother. But Humphrey decided, and so did Amir. So she's still reeling from it. And, you know, the little one's fine. She barely remembers them to begin with. You know, this may not be the best time for Amis to go off and start making some friends while she does the, the cha-cha slide in front of me. But it'll get her out the house. And, you know, she's never met anyone who wasn't from the house. Um, oh, hey, wait, she's antisocial. Does she even want to do that? um she doesn't even want to be around her brother and they're not talking she's she's mad just being here with him it's okay grogo you can catch the next one so um i know she doesn't want to do that but we're gonna do it anyways um just to get you out the house for a second let your brother fish in peace be to his own thoughts grieve on his own who have they not met well he, their father isn't around anymore to tell her that she can only hang out with rich kids uh, her cousins are still too young no well osbert has a birthday a little later so hopefully he survives and then the two cousins can hang out maybe so no one there there's a girl here that she can possibly talk to a peasant girl well they're technically middle class but they still live like peasants uh that's a complicated thing there's nope he grew up there's yes okay the lo wait is this the lord's son which one of you is the lord again uh the not the current lord okay um somebody's son the the red-haired boy there and the the blonde girl he, she could become friends with uh they're distantly late related to a lord the lord's kid is actually over here but this is already her older sibling's friend like the twins friend so I think I want her to go meet these rich people. I feel like she, even though Amir's still not here, she would take after his ideals. Let me see, there's a peasant girl here and a peasant boy. And that guy's still too young. Okay, yeah, I think she would go to the holders and befriend these two. I believe they're both werewolves as well. 
Also, this is where that werewolf that chased her sister. <laughs> no, no, this is a different one. The werewolf that chased her sister is a is a werewolf. The werewolves that are uh that are nobility are not noble, but like high class. They're they're like really chill. It was the peasant one that was going around chasing kids across my property. All right, so this is uh Blanca, Blanca Holder. Let's have a respectful introduction. This girl's freaking out in the back, but you know, maybe just try to get to know her. I know this isn't your favorite thing, but you know, having connections will be important in the future. Can I come this way? She's a daredevil. Okay, I don't know how you feel about that, but she is. I know she's not in the mood. This is making things even more difficult. Talk about siblings. She's like, yeah, I got two other, two, well, three older siblings and one younger one. Um, I don't, don't ask her for advice about dying family members. Um, I did not tell you to come here, Grogo. Go home. Oh God, I think he's already being a little protective of Amis. Yo, wait a second. Why is, okay. Do y'all see the way this lady was looking at Amis? Amis spotted that too. I think Grogo spotted that too and came running over. Girl. Did we just encounter our first racist? Like she looked like she about to hit this child for even daring to speak to someone like Amis. There's too much happening in this episode and I'm I'm still not done. I'm not I'm nowhere near done. Oh. Maybe enthused about sweets and candies and stuff. She, she's giving her like that mama glare, like that girl. I know you see me glare. Okay, yeah, I think her mom was kind of secretly scolding her for speaking with her. So I don't know. There's another child somewhere, but if this real lady is gonna be here influencing the kids not to converse with the meese because she's blue literally judging her skin color then i don't know what to say maybe this boy will be a bit more understanding uh this is a werewolf i think nelson maybe come be respectful to him don't chat with charlie charlie's mean go to the nice boy she stopped him did she stop her she stopped a meese from even entering the the estate to go talk to him she stopped her at the gate. This is a much more powerful family than ours, so he can't like do anything. And the one person who could do anything, our father, is dead. Amir would have tore this place apart had he heard what they did to one of his kids, especially Amis, based off of what we saw from the previous episode. Yo, I can't believe that. You okay? We're gonna find you some better friends. She's already antisocial. That would be my final straw. First, my parent. Okay, now he came out, but it's too late. She, <laughs> I think he heard, <laughs> probably heard his, I think that's his mom. I don't know. It might not be, but I think he heard fussing and was uh calling over. Okay, so who else can we go to? Um, um I think she's going to go home, actually. Or maybe she could talk to someone who's not like, OK, I think these guys would be OK. These people we know are perfectly fine because they're aliens in their household, so it's not going to be a problem. There's aliens in this household, too. These people are half alien. I can't remember. I don't think that girl is, but two of them are the toddler. And the girl with the brown hair are both aliens. So maybe she'll be a bit more receptive. She she is a peasant. But everyone else who I know would be okay doesn't have children who are her age. I think this family would be okay as well. I can't confirm or deny that quite yet, but I think that family would be okay with her differences. I can't believe we just experienced racism. <laughs> Amis is going to burn this village to the ground. And if she does in the future, I, I can't say that I necessarily blame her. She has a complete villain origin story. All right, um, there are blue people here. Well, they're not blue currently, but actually they're not blue at all. They're purple and green. 
So let's give a respectful introduction. This is not one of the aliens, but you know, she lives with them. And everybody's being chill. Everyone's being nice and chill and not racist. Talk about the hot temperature, maybe. And I, I don't think she's a fan of small talk, but okay, why y'all circling? Why did you hug her? Who is this? Is Victoria one of the aliens? Uh, can we give a friendly introduction? Why did you just hug this random lady? She must be one of those people that hug as greetings. I don't like I don't like being hugged as a greeting by someone I don't know, at least. Um, no, she is not one of the aliens yet. Okay, I was wrong. It's not the brown haired girls that's alien, it's the blue haired girl. Okay, I think she just saw Amis and saw how down she was and just wanted to cheer her up. You know? So I think Victoria has good intentions. Oh, uh, the other girl went inside and I can't knock on the door because, oh wait, there's a door. It's... That's fine. I think she's gonna go home. She's feeling antisocial anyways. Xenophilic for interacting with aliens. So this is alien. What did you do? Why are you in the red already? Okay, so this is the alien. Okay, I thought I was right. So she must have sensed that. Okay, so Victoria is being really kind because she herself is an alien. Where the fuck did she go? Where'd she go? That quickly, I just paused. Okay, well, Victoria is being kind to her because she saw how down she was and she herself is an alien. So I think she kind of put two and two together. Obviously not the full story. I'm sure she, I'm sure the whole village knows by now that this family has suffered some losses. Um, I'm sure she's realized someone in the family must be an alien because she hasn't really seen the girls out as much. And she kind of put two and two together. Like, oh, one of their alien, one of their parents must be an alien. And the other girl might be blue as well. So I think she was trying to extend some kindness um, and revealed that she was an alien because Amis figured that out really quickly. Become friends with Blanca. Oh, she just, okay, so she does want to make a friend and she wants to be friends with Blanca. They were getting along well until her mom, sister, aunt, cousin, until the older, older girl, I don't know, started, started mean mugging and being weird. Okay, um, go home. Grogo? What the hell? I thought I told you to go home. I don't know, he must have been waiting on his sister to walk back down the hill from the... from the place, yeah. He probably thought she... he was... <laughs> but she went the opposite direction, so he, he never... she never crossed his path. She he was probably waiting on her to, uh, make sure she was okay and see how things were going. Ah, uh, what a good big brother. Um, I, I don't know how to exactly explain what Denise is doing, but, uh, let's, let's take a look. Do y'all see anything out of the ordinary? Okay. 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 I mean, as long as she's eating, I guess, I don't know. You know, now that I think about it, Amir's story and death is almost really tragic because he did all of what he did because he was so afraid of death and dying so young at the age of 30. He's defied death so many times, technically to the point where he should be over 30 years old, but because he kept being revived, he died at 30. He died to the very thing or at the very way same time that he's been afraid to this entire time he got the death flower not for the war not for the plague not for anything else but because he knew deep in his heart that he would die at 30 like his father and all his steps stepfathers and like his grandfather before him his son didn't even get to make it to 30 uh you know and he did all that he killed his little sister for a death flower to prevent that, ended up having to use it because of a plague and ended up dying at age 30 anyways because deaf was deaf to his son's pleadings and was deaf to his little brother's pleadings for his son's life. 
So this is all just, I don't know. It's almost like an inescapable fate for him and almost like a form of karma. He did all of this thinking he was better than everybody, smarter than everybody, just to end up at the exact same spot he was trying to avoid. To me, it's the equivalent of those people who act crazy when they're driving and they're, they're so impatient trying to pass by every single person because they don't want to get caught a red light and they don't feel like driving behind like quote unquote slow drivers just to end up at this exact same red light as everybody else. Like you did all of that for nothing when you could have just not, you know, he could have just lived. He could have just accepted things as they were, but he connived. He was mean. He was rude. He was damn near abusive, all because he thought that he was going to be the one to survive and thrive and bring the family name to greatness. Not saying he didn't do a lot for the family, but just everything he thought was going to happen once Alice was gone and away, never even got the chance to happen. And he died at the very same, he died from the very same thing he was trying to trying to avoid well he died at the same time he was trying to avoid at 30 technically 35 but still 30 you know so i don't know i just think that that's in, in a way it's sad but also very fitting and almost deserved well very deserved for amir and for the final birthday of the episode we're back with stephen for just a moment to age up little osbert and remember, all of Stephen's kids also, if they survive the childhood, get to have a coin flip to see if they get a curse like their cousins. So he's aging into a child, so we want to avoid numbers 9 and 19. He got a 5. So he does survive, which is makes him Stephen's oldest surviving child because all the other children died before childhood. All right, so Osbert, congratulations. You are now a child. Let's see these traits. Let's see these traits, man. All right, come on. Oh, okay. You got to be fancy and do it in your sister's room. Fine by me. All right, so little Osbert is... Uh, I don't want to... Okay, he's creative and stone stone hearted i'm gonna get rid of the recycle disciple and it'll fill in when he's a teenager um boy will stephen hate ha that his eldest son has a similar way of thinking slash emoting as the brother he hates most uh that's that's really tragic but you know that saying that uh I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a saying or a superstition, but it's a superstition that the more you keep hyper focusing on or and like hating the traits for somebody for, of a person, your child will turn out like that person. Right. So if you keep making fun of someone for like having specific interests or looking a certain way, then your child will turn out that way. That's a superstition that I grew up with. So, yeah. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe Stephen was hating too hard and his son turned out stone hearted like his brother. Who knows? But I'm gonna give him a makeover and then flip to see his curse. Here's Osbert. He is super cute. He looks like his mom, actually. I thought he looked like more like a mirror, but he looks like his mom. And that's it. So uh, Stephen officially has a child who reached the age of six. Uh, it took most of his life he's now an adult he's been having children since he was a teenager that's how long it's been so shout out to him for real congratulations i wish that all of your children continue to survive also oh i just realized i feel really bad for alice she's outlived most of her family at this point she's probably sick and tired right because she's outlived her parents as most people expect to do she's outlived her siblings because of you know famine purposes and also her mother because of the famine but still she outlived three husbands and she's outlived all of her children except for three the only surviving f four the only ch surviving children she has now are nura marjorie stephen and ivo which is still a good a good chunk but compared to like the 12 the 10 12 she's had that's it's not a lot to be completely honest 
But let's flip this coin to see if he gets a curse or not. Okay, he got tail, so he does. And let me get this wheel back out. Why? I don't know why I took it off of the curse wheel. All right. So what is your curse, good sir? He is... Oh! He's possessed just like his cousin. I lost the trait. So once again, these sims act and talk weirdly as if there are multiple souls living inside the same sim body. So that's his curse. I kind of wish he got something different because we already saw those two with the others, but doesn't matter. Um, if all these other ones survive, then we have a good amount, uh, a good chance of seeing some of the others. So God, I really want to know how this will be with Osbert and his stone hearted trait now that I think about it. But Oh, well, at least he's creative. So maybe instead of releasing those thoughts and selfishness in, in, in negative ways, like his uncle did, maybe he'll release it on a canvas or a sculpture or something. I have always feeling much, much better. So today is definitely the day where he is going to go ahead, have a quick little private wedding with no audience with his wife, with his future wife. And they, and he's going to move in with her. Um, I think Mary is pretty stable by now. Obviously, Ivo will be nearby to help, but so is Stephen. Technically, Stephen is nearby to help as well. So she's not completely alone in a village or anything like that. The only thing is she doesn't really have anyone close in the household anymore. You know, her siblings and par her parents are dead. Her siblings are out of the village where her re remaining sibling is out of the village. And um, yeah, so he's going to go. I, I guess he's saying his goodbye to Sybil and some of the other si siblings real quick. Well, goodbye, but he's he's moving down the street. He's moving in closer into the middle of the city. Marjorie's sending a letter to Mary. Okay, they used to be pretty close, so Marjorie's probably extending her condolences and uh, having a conversation with her through this letter. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Now they're technically engaged, but... um, Okay, finish her proposal. Her mother's here to watch over, as always. She has a very helicopter mom, almost, but... Let's, um, can we not elope immediately or, hey, hey, relax, relax. Oh, wait, 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 I passed by it. Elope immediately. I'm sorry we didn't get you a cake or a, a nice wedding event or anything. It's just the timing of it all. Okay. Guys, can you move? Please, you're in the way. Okay, well, she's, she's just being a proud mother. She just wants to commemorate this to her memory for her last moments. Now she knows that her family will be safe and secure. Her eldest, her only daughter, has married a nice man who comes from money and can take care of them. Her youngest one will probably be married off soon enough, but now she can finally relax and get some rest knowing that her daughter is not only in a marriage but a, a, a loving one you know getting married is easy yeah, being in a loving one is the difficult part oh look at these two second face all right so they're both here um as awkward as this is gonna be oh wait they can't do it in there um i know that this shower thing is not time period accurate but i can't say i care that much uh, for a side household um, so they're going to have their very first woohoo. And remember, Ivo gets six pregnancies, so he has the potential to have quite a few children. Please don't overheat and die. And she's pregnant! Okay. Congratulations, Ivo, on your new, on your new wife, your new life, your new family. The family that's on the way. You deserve this. You've been through a lot this past few months, essentially. May you have a happy life and a happy wife and i am going to end this episode right here because unfortunately everyone the end of this episode the machinima you are about to see are the final moments of alice smith craftman humphreys 
because today is the day she dies. Today is that day. It is Alice Day. And these are her last moments. She's decided to stay here in Willow Creek. She's kind of felt it coming on. She she knew this was coming. Honestly, she could just feel her heart breaking more and more. She was ready to move on and, and join her family, her children, her husbands, her parents, her siblings, and just let the family move on without her. She thinks it's time. She's done all she can and she saw how much they've all flourished and thrived under her guidance, right? So today is Alice Day and these are her final moments. She's just enjoying her final day, her final hours outside chatting with the farm animals just like when she was a girl. So with that all said and done, I'll see y'all in the next episode. Bye. To those who received this letter, it is with heavy heart that I announce the passing of your mother and my mother-in-law, Alice Smith. Alice passed peacefully in my home in Willow Creek where she spent the past year assisting with the children after Noss's passing. Although many of you would like to have Alice's final resting place be at her family home in Henford Don Bagley, she has requested to remain buried here in Willow Creek. I know news of her death will come as a shock to many. She has lived a long life, and yet, Still, it seems it was not long enough. Alice has raised, cared for, and loved all of us even if she was not near. She will be deeply missed. Before her passing, she has asked me to carry on a message to the family. She says not to grieve her for too long, but to celebrate the life she had and the family she has created. She talked about how difficult life was when she was a young girl and the sacrifices she made in order to make sure that her future children and grandchildren wouldn't know what that way of life was like. Alice said that the one regret she had on her deathbed was not being able to spend more time with those she had lost. But as we all know, death is never expected. She wants us all to remain focused on doing what is best for our families and to love and care for those around us. Alice apologizes that she will not be able to be here for us anymore. She wanted nothing more than to be a helping hand when we suffered loss and to see all of her grandchildren and children marry and live happy lives. Although she will no longer be here with us physically, she has assured me that she will be watching over us along with the others we have lost over the years. She wants us to take care of each other when we need aid and to stay within contact as best we can. Alice knows that life will not always be simple or easy, but she urges us to make the most of each moment to thrive and grow as people and as a family. There will be a time where we will grieve again or feel lost. Alice wants us all to remember that you are never alone. She will always be there to watch over us. Sincerely, Falka.